primary schools, secondary schools and colleges across England must move to remote provision from tomorrow, except for vulnerable children and the children of key workers. Sorry, Prime Minister, how did they go from being completely safe on Sunday and yesterday morning to being so dangerous they all have to be closed? Now, we know the answer. The answer is you eventually got to the right decision because the case numbers of this uh, variant of COVID-19 are exploding. We can see that, but we could see that before Sunday. Mm. We could all see the numbers. Why? Why do you do this? Why do you send all the kids? Why do you disrupt everybody's lives completely unnecessarily? Teachers, parents, kids, everything, for one day and then pull the plug. It is utterly insane and so indicative of the way this government has handled this campaign. Let's bring in Hillary. Hillary, I can't see you because there's a very large thing between me and you in reality. Have we now got a screen between us and yeah, Dr Hillary? Yeah, you've been screened off, oh, uh, which is a bit it's weird. It's probably safer, to You have no idea what I'm talking about, because to them it all looks like we're all together, but we're not. <laughs> yeah. You're miles away. Um, Hillary, it seemed bleedingly obvious uh, for the last... You know, for, when from the moment Gavin Williamson said he was confident everything was fine... And I there knew, wouldn't I knew be another wasn't. national lockdown. I, I said the one thing that fills me with no confidence is him saying he's confident. But the reality is, sending kids back for one day, never mind the damage to the kids, the parents, the teachers and so on, the public health problem with what they did was sending millions of people back into classrooms who we know are the biggest transmitters of the virus for one day and then letting them all go home. I mean, madness, isn't it? Yes, it's a super spreader event. I mean, I said on this show uh, before uh, Christmas that uh, the, the uh, arrangements for Christmas and New Year were a disaster waiting to happen. Here we have this new variant, 70% more transmissible, um, and hospitals uh, filling to the brim in critical care and intensive care. And we shouldn't have been in this position. Had we been stricter... Uh, before Christmas, then we could have avoided the, the number of uh, people in hospital right mm. now. Um, and, and this decision about schools, again, it was a very late decision and it could have been avoided uh, with all the disruption that it caused. Um, and it's the right decision to close schools because whilst children are safe, they're, they're, they're very rarely affected in a significant way by COVID. Uh, we know that they can bring this, uh, this new variant particularly back to homes where grandparents and, and parents themselves are... Um, exposed to it. So that could have been avoided. And we, we now have a situation, if you talk to people in hospitals, where hospitals are filling up 40% more patients in, in ITU now than we had at any stage in this pandemic. This mm. is a very, very serious situation. And as I say, vaccination is part of the answer, but it certainly isn't the whole answer. And the public response now will be absolutely key to what happens in the months going forward. And I was reading, Hilary, uh, I think it's King's Hospital in London, I'll just confirm that, uh, has had to delay uh, cancer operations uh, because they simply don't have the facilities to do them. And these are ones that apparently have to be done within a 28-day oh, period yeah. or the <clears throat> patients, you know, they, it can be too late then to operate. Yeah, uh, I it's, mean, that's... It's, it's simply it's getting King, to the I'm stage. told it is King's in London. I mean, that's incredibly serious. And we had all this, of course, back yeah. in the first wave. And my, my question is, why, why are we not better prepared nine months later for this eventuality? We knew a second wave was likely. It's come. It's ferocious. There's a new variant. We knew that might be likely too. And yet here we are again with cancer patients whose lives are just as important as uh, anyone who's course. suffering from COVID. Of course. And they may, may now reach a position, some of them, and this is utterly heartbreaking and, I think, shameful, mm -hmm. where by having their operations cancelled because of this second wave, oh they God. may not get the chance to have life-saving surgery. It's heartbreaking. Not only are they at risk because their immunity is, is diminished by their disease, um, and it, secondly, it's too risky uh, to go into hospital at the moment with so much COVID-19 in, in, in those places. So uh, they're hit by a double whammy. Um, and they have the anxiety and the worry that goes with that, what happens in the future. The staff are pulling their hair out because they want to help as much as possible, but their hands are tied. Yeah. Um, and we've just got to get a handle on this. People don't seem to understand 
the risk of this infection. They, do they, you they, think they that's don't true, understand Dr. how it's transmitted. It might, do you know what? I thought it was interesting yesterday that the health secretary said this isn't just about what the government that does. This is what people do as well. You know, and people have got to follow the rules. My impression is that people are slavishly following the rules. There is a huge majority of people who support lockdown. It's only a small yeah. number of people who are... In fact, the, are poll, the poll said, didn't it? Yeah, 80%. almost 80% said supported they another support, lockdown. And, and I think people do, because I've always said this. We, we discussed this uh, before the show began. I've always felt that a national lockdown is the simplest mm. and easiest thing for people to get their heads around. We're all in it together, albeit, and it's a very important albeit, very different levels of comfort, but we're all in it together in terms of the same rules apply to everybody... It's much clearer. Mm. We all have a much better idea of what we can do and where we can do it and how we can do it. And I do think that may bring out more of a community spirit than the kind of them and us tier system, which often made very little mm. sense, divided in some cases towns in half and so on. You know, it just seems to me if we've got the vaccines, Hillary, and that we know we've got three that are working and we can get well, we've millions... we've got two that are approved. And, and Moderna yeah. coming, right? If we, can get, if we can get these through at the speed that they're talking about, then th we really do have light at the end of the tunnel come the spring. Yes, uh, it depends on a lot of factors. 13 million doses to be given in, in uh, a few weeks is a huge ask. First of all, where are the staff coming from to administer the vaccines? Do we have enough of the vaccines in production? Do we have enough centres and hubs to give these vaccinations to people? And do we have the organisation? Uh, many of my GP colleagues are pulling their hair out because they're told that the vaccine will be provided on uh, day X, only to be told that actually it's going to be two days later. Well, here's my question for later. you, Hillary. Here's and my question for you. having to cancel that many patients right. and reorganise those appointments... But here's my question for you. ..is a huge organisational task. Right, it is... But let me take you back to Election Day last December. Over 30 million people voted in polling booths in this country mm. in one day. We've had, again, nine months to prepare yeah. for vaccines. Yeah. And, the you know, and, the and we are very experienced at rolling yeah. out vaccines. So my question is, if, as they say, the uh, AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines, if they say they've got it all coming... Why can we not roll out the right. vaccination programme in the way that we roll out a general election polling day? It was a letter in yeah. the Telegraph well, that I saw on the sure. way in making that very point. Well, remember that when you go and vote, it, it, takes, it takes 10 seconds. You go in, you tick a box and you go out A vaccination again. takes 10 seconds. Yes, it does. The vaccination itself does. But getting the vaccination to those centres right. and pubs at minus 70 degrees centigrade is a completely different thing. But the Oxford thing. one doesn't Also, then you that. have to wait for the patient 15 minutes to make sure that they're OK, mm. that they have no reaction. So you've got sort of a 20-minute period, 20 minutes for each vaccine. With everybody not socially two, distanced Not 10 as seconds. Well. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really Dr. hard. But, Dr Hillary, one of the things we keep saying is that we're staying at home to protect the NHS from being overwhelmed. Is this time to have a look at what the NHS can do? Because it seems that if we're staying at home to protect the NHS, and we talked to the Health Secretary yesterday about the fact we went into this crisis 40,000 nurses down. Now, he said we now have an extra 13,000 nurses. Well, that's not extra because that's only filling a small gap that we had. We surely, in order to emerge from this, have to boost the NHS, don't we? Oh, absolutely. And, and most of those 13,000 wouldn't have been full-time nurses, I, I, I'm prepared to bet. Uh, they would be part-time um, and probably not fully, fully qualified. So I, I think that we, we did start this uh, totally underprepared and under-resourced. Uh, successive governments have underfunded the NHS. Uh, the NHS have been crying out for more resources, more hospitals, more beds. It's been stripped to the bone uh, with 100% bed occupancy almost, uh, giving no room for, for uh, extra procedures, including a pandemic. Uh, even the pandemic, um, the vaccination programmes have been underfunded. So we just weren't ready even with PPE, yeah. for this pandemic, which we had an exercise for, as you know, Piers, uh, uh, Cygnus, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, two, three years ago now. Yeah. Uh, we should have seen this coming. Yeah, we we should, should have done. done. And Jeremy Hunt yesterday did a Twitter thread, very powerful. He was right in everything he was saying. But he was the health secretary from that exercise, Cygnus, yeah. in 2016. Why will we... I mean, this will be one of the questions for the inquiry, but it's incredibly important because, you know, we've been told this is not even the big one, this pandemic, that it's quite likely we'll get another one. Right. Are we ready for that one when it comes? We've got to be ready because we can't live our lives in a rolling lockdown. 
we have got to make sure that the NHS is able to deal with what is happening and what is coming. We've got to boost the staff. We've got to give it whatever it needs, haven't we? And with the vaccine programme, my goodness, they've got to stop at nothing in order Why to get Why is Israel vaccinating vaccinated. so much more of its population than we are? Boris Johnson boasts about our vaccinations compared to Europe, but what about Israel? Mm. Israel has now done unbelievable numbers of their population. They're clearly better geared up for it. How are they doing it? What can we learn? I would just bring in as many of the armed forces as we possibly can, all their logistical brains. Bring in the colonels, the generals, the brigadiers. You know, we're not waging uh, any big war right now. Let's wage a war on coronavirus in our own country. Yeah.